Thank you very much, Lauren. Um, uh, yes, and welcome to the WorkMax Time Informs Overview Webinar, uh, hosted by Action and Associates in conjunction with About Time Technologies and the WorkMax platform. Uh, we are really excited to be here today and present, and we'll look forward to continued communication uh, in the future with you guys. Um, my name is Zachary Hill. I'm the Vice President of Partner Relations for About Time Technologies and have been with the company for 15 years, um, almost the entirety of my professional career. Um, you know, over the course of that time, um, I've seen that when the WorkMax platform is in, implemented and used correctly, um, we've seen it, uh, you know, be able to deliver astounding results for our customers. Um, it's really not unheard of uh, for companies using our time and attendance module to see an immediate decrease in their overall payroll output uh, by upwards of 15 to 20 percent. Um, and on the other side, with regards to data processing, um, you know, we've seen it uh, help companies reduce their data processing time by upwards of, of 80 percent. Um, this is in large part due to the relationship and the integrations that we've been able to uh, work on with Sage uh, through the years. Um, but this webinar is intended to provide an overview of those integrations and the platform itself and a deeper dive into a few of the key features that Sage customers are using to drive down those labor costs um, and increase visibility of field data, um, you know, resulting in uh, more accurate project cost management. So at the conclusion of this webinar, uh, we will have a brief question and answer period. Uh, following that, a link uh, should be issued. Uh, with a copy of the presentation itself, uh, as well as a special offer uh, we want to uh, uh, give to those who attended the webinar today and find themselves in a position to implement the WorkMax system. Um, so uh, WorkMax coined a, a term, uh, well, let's start with the history of the company. So About Time Technologies is the company uh, that, uh, uh, that created the WorkMax platform. Um, one of the things that gives us uh, uh, the ability to do what we do is longevity in the industry. So we have the vision to create a mobile resource ma uh, management platform in 2003, um, so a long time ago. And from that point, we continued to develop uh, applications for Palm Pilots, uh, Blackberries, uh, Apple and Android as they came online, and subsequently through the years uh, have continued to develop on the platform. So being in the industry uh, this long, specifically focused on field data collection has uh, afforded us the opportunity to run into any eventual pitfall um, that could happen with time and attendance and be able to work through those challenges. Uh, so as it stands today, uh, WorkMax platform offers the most comprehensive uh, time and attendance uh, management system for the construction industry and the most user-friendly and uh, uh, capable mobile app uh, for your field employees to uh, be able to, to get that data to you. Um, some of the WorkMax customers that we've been able to uh, work with through the years um, are on this list. A lot of them are uh, Sage 100 or Sage 300 users. Um, so no matter the size of the company from, you know, uh, a five employee small contracting shop all the way up to enterprise uh, level companies uh, and everything in between, um, we're able to handle uh, the, the time and attendance requirements uh, for those companies. Uh, so live field data um, is a phrase that we coined that really is a tipping point for uh, more accurate project costs, labor costs, and efficiency with processing that data. Um, we feel like uh, if you knock that domino over and start collecting data more frequently, more accurately, and giving those in the office and the field um, who would benefit from that data, giving it to them uh, more often, uh, we feel like it's knocking a domino over that will affect um, many other areas of a business. So uh, accuracy and reduction in labor costs, daily budget updates for labor and production units, actionable data to keep jobs and employees on track, uh, refined and consolidated data for future estimating and bidding in a competitive market. 
So these are some of the key things that we're trying to uh, you know, work with our clients on and uh, and utilize the tools inside the WorkMax system that are appropriate for uh, each individual business. Um, big reason why we are partnered up with and uh, appreciate and enjoy working with Action and Associates um, is because of our relationship with uh, Sage and the programs that they offer. Um, so the first thing we'll talk about in this presentation today is the integration to Sage 100 and Sage 300 contractor. Um, so the two integrations themselves uh, work a little bit differently from each other. Sage 100 uh, provides us with an API uh, that we can connect directly to the system to pull and push information. And uh, Sage 300 is more of a database connection instead of an API. Um, but the concept is the same. What we want to do is we want to hook the WorkMax system up to your Sage 100 or 300 and use it to pull uh, the necessary data into the WorkMax platform. So uh, the types of data that we pull are going to be employees, uh, jobs, cost codes, uh, budgets, assets and, and equipment. Uh, those types of data points are what are going to come over. So once we pull or connect to uh, the accounting system and pull data, the first place that that data is going to land is in what we call the WorkMax Control Center up in the cloud. Um, inside of the Control Center, there are various settings that you can apply to the data to make sure that it is routed to the appropriate individuals who need to actually see it. Uh, so if you have an extensive either employee list or cost code list or you do a lot of jobs, and one individual may need to see a certain set of jobs and another individual may need to see a completely different set. All of those settings are in the back end and applied before we move data out to the mobile devices. So once we have all that set up, we push the data out to the mobile devices where the employees will have the opportunity to clock in, clock out, uh, track all the necessary data, um, and then that bi-directional sync will send the data back to the WorkMax Control Center where those in the office will have the opportunity to review the data, make any necessary adjustments to it if it needs to be edited, uh, run it through approval processes uh, so that when we look to export the data back out of the system and into the accounting system, it is as complete as we can get it. Um, we want you to get the data to a point that when we kick the payroll output out, um, it's ready for import into the accounting system. So um, that last step there is, is where we take care of it. So a couple of the key points to remember about the integration with SAGE. Um, the integration is standard to SAGE requirements. Um, so SAGE is the one that uh, tells us what we're allowed to pull and subsequently what we're allowed to push and so over the course of the years, we have adhered to and tried to, uh, you know, maximize uh, our ability to integrate based on uh, what they allow. Um, the Sage 100 exports to the 551 and 6116. So it's a daily field payroll. And again, that is done directly through uh, an API connection. Okay, so the, the Sage 300. Uh, what we import from Sage 300 is going to be uh, the job phase and extra, as well as budgeted labor hours per cost code for the project. And then the extra is what we use to uh, handle change order management. And then uh, the export file includes all that information going back to Sage. Okay, both of these are proven and refined integrations uh, with over 12 years as SAGE partners. So we started this with them a long time ago and have continued to develop uh, alongside them with the updates. And uh, it's one of the things that we're most proud about and uh, we love to work with, uh, with SAGE clients. So a couple things uh, that are important to know before we jump into the actual application itself. Um, the WorkMax mobile app um, is bilingual in the sense you can choose whether it is displayed in English or Spanish, okay, and the mobile app, it works offline. So uh, whether you're on Android or Apple devices, uh, whether you use a smartphone or prefer a tablet connected to a data plan or not, um, it doesn't matter. The WorkMax mobile app is native. Um, 
loaded onto the device and whether that device is connected or not, you can still use it to clock in, uh, select a job, select a cost code, basically manage everything and it will store the data locally to the device until you get into a connected area and have the opportunity to uh, sync it to the back end. Okay, um, two of the things that we're gonna go over today, uh, the WorkMax time and the WorkMax forms, uh, mobile forms module. Um, so uh, in the past we have, uh, you know, encountered situations where, where there is a, uh, a time function uh, and a completely separate program that people use to collect forms. So in the WorkMax platform, as we were developing it out, um, we put both of them uh, into the platform and then essentially, if you can call it this, we created an integration inside of our platform between the two. Um, so that depending on um, what you need for data routing purposes or what types of data can be collected at the, at the, uh, at the point of entry for time, uh, we can back that with a mobile form uh, that requires the employee to fill in some additional information and we're gonna go through uh, both of those in pretty good detail, the time and the forms module um, inside of the actual platform. Um, so WorkMax is built as a, essentially a, a tool belt, I guess you could say. We have um, many, many tools that are available to use to solve the challenges that our potential customers are looking to solve with regards to field data and reporting. Um, never have I seen uh, in my years here uh, one customer that essentially redlines the system or uses a majority of the features and functionality that we have to offer. Um, so after this, uh, this webinar um, and in a uh, follow-up type of situation, what we can help you do is identify which tools within the WorkMax platform apply to the way, the way and the types of data um, that are collected for you in the field and then uh, you know, build a program around those features and that functionality specifically for your company. Um, so that flexibility allows us to create multiple workflows within the system. So this is an example of a real-time individual clock in and clock out workflow. This is the most accurate way that we have to do it and essentially requires that an employee uh, show up, clock into the job that they're working on. If they switch tasks throughout the day, uh, pull out their phone, uh, clock into the next task, and uh, subsequently throughout the day just uh, manage the time. So this is one opportunity or one option of a workflow that we offer. Uh, another one that we offer is real time with allocation. So for those in a situation where it may not be feasible for employees to be switching their jobs or switching their tasks as they go through the day, uh, we can give you the option to clock in in the morning clock out at the end of the day, and then use an allocation tool to break that time up to the various jobs and potentially the, the tasks that the employee works on. So uh, with these two options, I do wanna draw the distinction that um, it is not an all or nothing proposal from WorkMax. You don't have to choose between one or the other workflow. If you are in a situation where uh, one subset of your employees may uh, require the real-time workflow, and then another may be uh, more apt to use the real-time with allocation. You can use any one of or a combination of all of the workflows that are offered uh, through WorkMax uh, to get yourself into a situation where you feel like you have a, uh, a, a complete system and it's functioning the way um, that, that uh, you had intended it. So. Um, what I'm gonna do now is pause my screen and we are going to hop over to the actual WorkMax platform itself and walk through some of these features. Lauren, uh, can you tell me if you see getting started in WorkMax iOS app on your screen? I do, it looks lovely. Okay, great. So. Uh, so here we are, this is the WorkMax, uh, what we call the control center. Um, WorkMax is a web-based um, system, uh, so it's hosted up in the cloud. Uh, some people know the buzzword that's going around these days, it's a SaaS uh, system. 
And one of the big benefits that we like to talk about uh, with regards to being a web-based program is accessibility to the data. Um, this really uh, turns it into a situation where uh, people who need to interact with the data uh, for whatever purposes or for emergency purposes, if they're away from the, uh, the office, as long as you're on a device that has access to the internet and a web browser, uh, you could essentially navigate to app.workmax.com, put your username and password in, and get access to the WorkMax Control Center. So, um, really, the the most it's it's compared to uh, how things used to be. This is unprecedented level of access to your data. Um, so it's one of the benefits of being web based. Uh, but again, um, as we talked about before, the WorkMax mobile app is a native app, so it will function whether disconnected uh, or connected to the internet. Um, as far as the back end, uh, internet connection and web browser, username and password are all that are required to get in here. So uh, we tried to keep the navigation of this uh, um, as simple as, as we possibly could. Um, as nerdy as it sounds, um, we wanted this to be an enjoyable software to use uh, as much as possible, as well as having it be functional, because in a lot of cases, um, there will be some work that needs to be done here in the control center, right? So for whoever has to do the, that work, we wanted it to be simple and, uh, and uh, enjoyable to use. So a couple key points that, uh, that I like to mention about the control center itself, um, everything is based off of uh, essentially two areas. So up under the WorkMax logo in the top right, um, there's a settings menu. Uh, if we drop that settings menu down, that's where your system settings are gonna reside as well as all of your list data. Um, so your employee list, uh, any projects or job sites uh, that you have, task and cost code list, and any devices or integrations that are set up with the system. All of that list data is gonna be over here in the settings menu. And then up in the top left-hand corner, uh, this is the representation of the modules that are available um, inside of the WorkMax system. Today, we're gonna be doing a a deeper dive on specifically the time and attendance module and the mobile forms, uh, but there are additional modules being asset management and insight uh, that are available to use within the system as well. And at some time in the future, uh, maybe we'll have a, another webinar and go into those a little bit more deep, uh, or um, if we have any additional conversations uh, with any individuals after this, we can touch on those modules as well. Um, so I'm going to click on the time and attendance module um, to start with, um, and it's going to bring me into an area of the system that we call the time editor. Uh, so inside the time editor, uh, this is where raw, da uh, raw data or raw records that are coming in from the mobile devices, uh, this is where it will initially land. Um, this is all driven by a period that you set. Um, on the right-hand side, you can set a date range of the information that you need to see, whether it's a day, a week, a month, and hit go. And down below in the time editor grid, it will populate all that data for you. Um, this time editor grid um, is, is uh, pretty flexible in the sense that we can adjust what columns um, are available for any individual to see. Um, so the example would be if it's a, uh, a superintendent or a field foreman that needs to get in here to do uh, review and approval of records, uh, they may want to see or interact with certain pieces of data. A payroll coordinator might have a whole different set of data that they need to see inside of this grid. So on a per user basis, it is customizable. So we click this uh, box over here, you will see a list of all of the available data fields that can show up in those columns you'd be able to uncheck or check the ones that you want to see. And then as an example, if you wanted to relocate any of that data, you can click and drag um, those to different places and it will reorder them in the grid for you. By clicking on the check mark, um, it will set those for you. Okay, so the grid is customizable on a per login basis. Um, the rest of the data is pretty self-explanatory here. Um, we have tags, uh, which are visual indicators about the record. So we want anybody that comes in here and sets a period and hits go, um, these tags should draw your attention to records that need to be 
looked at in a little bit more detail. Um, so as an example, anything that is in red, for me personally at least, uh, stands out. Um, so we can see uh, here in this tag, it's telling me that there's a problem with uh, Brandon Boyd's face capture. Um, you'll have to forgive me, I don't know who's gonna pop up when I do this, but I assume uh, when I click on that and go to the recognition, uh, it's gonna tell me, uh, there we go. Okay, so this is, uh, this is WorkMax's patent, patented facial recognition technology. And it's one of the, the hottest features that we have right now. Um, one of our customers, uh, Red and Concrete, said uh, they credit the facial recognition to helping them save over a million dollars the first year that they started using WorkMax because they can uh, essentially verify that each of their employees are showing up uh, for work. So this one's telling me it's bad because we got a, a picture for the in stamp and no picture for the out stamp. So. Um, so that's the facial recognition. Um, a red flag indicates that it's an incomplete entry. And uh, maybe what I'll do is show you how easy or quickly you can edit one of these records. Uh, so this one, it looks like this employee uh, forgot to clock out at the end of the day. A uh, simple fix is gonna be to select the record itself, um, hit edit down below, it will expose all the data for the record. And then you can just make the uh, necessary adjustments. So I'm gonna put this on the same day, uh, we're gonna say that they clocked out at, at six, we'll hit save, um, it will update that record, and uh, now that is complete. Okay, so easy navigation through here. Um, one other thing that a lot of people uh, like to see here in the time editor uh, is we have the ability to filter records. So um, we're looking at 74 total records here and a total of 333 hours. Um, you can filter down to pretty much any of these data points and also any of the tags. So payroll coordinators or people who are coming in here to review records, a lot of times what they like to do is drop the, the filters down and sort by the tags um, that may indicate a problem with the record. So show me the ones that have bad facial recognition and or the ones that have an incomplete entry or stamps that were taken outside of our geofence. And now we have those records isolated. So instead of 74, uh, we're down to a total of nine. Uh, you can uh, take the necessary actions to make these accurate and then continue on with the, with the payroll processes. Okay, so that's the time editor um, and the time module um, inside of the back end. Um, the other thing that we wanted to touch on today is the mobile forms component. Um, this is one of the most powerful modules that WorkMax offers. And one of the things that makes it so powerful is the fact that, is the fact that it's 100% customizable. Uh, so when any of our uh, prospects or clients get started with the mobile forms uh, module inside of WorkMax, essentially what you get is a form builder. So there are four categories for it. We have submit, draft, completed, and then your form builder. Um, so the form builder, uh, or I guess repository of forms that you see here um, under the form name, um, on initial implementation, this is blank. And what we do is we teach our clients how to use the form builder uh, to create whatever form they need to have filled out either in the office or the field. Okay, so one that we, use quite a bit or go through quite a bit is, uh, is a daily job report. So I'm gonna click that. Um, what you'll see is a, a list of options over to the left. Um, these objects dropped into the right-hand side, uh, relabeled for uh, whatever specific purpose uh, they need. And you can apply various settings um, to each of these fields to make sure that they are showing up in the correct order and at the correct time. And then on top of that, uh, the other two settings that a lot of uh, that people like to see are we have subscriptions, which allow for each instance of this form being filled out to be automatically emailed to the appropriate parties who need to see it. Uh, so think a safety form or a uh, uh, injury report. If that needs to go immediately to the safety coordinator, you can take that form, add your safety coordinator as the auto email response, Anytime it's filled out, it will be emailed over to them. And then the time requirements, 
um, are also important. So we can use employee time requirements or location. Uh, so this is your project or your job site. So we can say, hey, when any employee or when these employees fill out or clock in for the day or clock out, we need them to fill out this form. Or you can say when an employee clocks in or out of this specific project, these are the forms that they need to fill out. Okay. So we are running up against uh, time, and I believe it's time for a uh, question and answer, but um, we have not made it out to the mobile app yet. So I'm going to pause here and allow Lauren to come in and uh, let us know what to do now. All right, so you want me to switch it to your iPad, right? Um, you can switch it to my iPad if we're running out of time and people need to go then uh, then we can do QA and schedule another one for the iPad later, whatever works. Let's go ahead and um, uh, to the attendees, um, we, like Zach mentioned, we are, you know, getting close to the end of our allotted time, but um, I know that you are still with us and still engaged in this presentation. So let's go ahead and push forward with the um, mobile Part here is Zach. So I'm going to make your other iPad here. There we go. So you now have the ability to share that screen. Okay. And just so you all know, as um, Zach's getting that pulled up. Um, so, yes, while we are technically about out of time, um, we're, we'll try to finish this up. And um, if at some point you need to hop off and, and you're running out of time, this is. That's fine. I'm going to be sending you the recording anyway. So, and um, we'll be following up with you. So, we can always answer any questions and show you more of this as time um, uh, allows later, if that's a possibility. Okay. Yes, I appreciate that. And, uh, and uh, as much as I like to ramble on and on about this, and I feel like I could do it all day, um, I'm still that excited about it after 15 years. Um, I can work expeditiously or quickly through this mobile app uh, presentation. Um, really, the, the important things to know are, like we discussed uh, earlier in the presentation, there is flexibility as far as the workflow is concerned. So depending on the PIN number that is entered, a different set of rules or requirements will show up based on what the employee is uh, essentially required to do within the system. So I'm going to put a basic PIN number in here, and it's going to authenticate Nick Hexum. So this is uh, one of the employees um, that's working for the company. If they're looking to clock in in the morning, uh, get their day started, all they have to do is hit clock in. Um, you'll see the employee name, the project or the job site that the, the, the device is set to. Um, so if I click on that, I can change the job. We'll pick a project, uh, have the opportunity to enter a field note. Uh, but if everything else looks good, um, the facial recognition allows me to center my face. Hit confirm on the record. That record is now processed and you have an employee clocked in to uh, uh, work for the day and selected uh, a project that they are working on. So just like that, that is WorkMax in its most basic form, uh, but also that very step of getting an employee clocked in in real time and subsequently clocked out at the end of the day, that is one of the biggest value adds for our prospects. Um, and it's, uh, to me, it is the simplicity in that is wonderful. Um, if, if currently you're not running a real-time system where employees clock in and clock out, just by having them do that simple step, um, that is the key to potentially reducing the payroll by 15 to 20% uh, overall across your company. And that's not an indirect benefit. Uh, those dollars hit the bottom line. We call it the sacred money because that's the, the only way, the only way that you can get to it is, uh, is by requiring that employees clock in and clock out. Um, so a little bit more advanced, again, and just to show you that there are other options within the WorkMax system, I'm going to put a PIN number in that is more of a foreman. Okay, so if you're in a situation where you don't feel like it, it would be appropriate for employees to clock themselves in and clock themselves out. You can designate a, a, a foreman or a manager inside of the system that will allow them to, instead of just clocking themselves in, they can access other employees in the system. So I can grab Chris 
and David as well. And now I have three employees that I'm clocking in instead of just myself. So if that's uh, more appropriate to how you manage uh, your crews, um, then that's totally available. So I'm going to hit the uh, the project here and select the job site that the three of us are going to be clocked into. And then I'm going to select a task uh, for this one as well. Forge flat. Okay, opportunity to put a note. You'll notice here because the option is taken off, no facial recognition for this one. Uh, but now I'm going to hit confirm. It's going to confirm those stamps. Uh, those three employees are now clocked in. Okay, and, and again, the, uh, the, the benefit there or what I hope um, is displaying is well, a couple things. Simplicity, it's not very difficult to use, and flexibility, right? Whether you want the individuals tracking this, uh, want to put it in the hands of a manager, or any combination of those things, uh, we talk about that pre-setup and then make sure that your settings are uh, applied appropriately so that's the, the way it functions for you, okay? Um, another thing that uh, before we get off of the, the time and attendance, um, I'm going to go back in and essentially show you um, what it would take to clock into another cost code. But the reason why I'm coming back in here is I want you to see that previously we clocked into four inch flat as a task or a cost code. And because I have designated that specific task as a task that requires the entry of a production unit, when I come back into the system to either clock out for the end of the day or clock into a new task, you can see that it applied a field asking me to provide how many production units were accomplished uh, for four inch flat work and it's asking for it in yards. So I can put how many yards, um, essentially four inch concrete uh, we put in there. So uh, from basic clock in and clock out um, to advanced manager functions, and uh, again, the ability to apply specific features within WorkMax, as you can see here, this person has access to our forms module. Um, this is how we start to begin or putting together a solution that is going to accomplish not only your time and attendance tracking goals, but also additional uh, field data that needs to be collected, right? And the Last thing that I will show here is the integration of our time and forms module. So I'm going to put a different pin number in here. Uh, last employee, uh, this person, when Golden comes to clock in, um, I've said a form needs to be filled out. So when I hit the end, you'll see that form down at the bottom, Cali Basic clock in as required. Uh, before this employee can execute their clock in, uh, they'll have to hit this and answer a series of questions. Right, you have COVID or anything like it. I uh, showed that to a lawyer and they didn't think it was funny. They're like, uh, can you take that out? Can you edit it? And they thought it was standard in the field, but yes, you have COVID or anything like it. I'm going to say no here. Uh, do you have all required safety equipment and certifications to perform your job duties? Uh, when I come into this, if I click yes, it'll just let me go. But if I say no, um, it will know that something is missing and you can uh, put additional questions behind it. And then by signing below, you're indicating that you're fit, healthy, and ready to go to work today. Um, can capture an employee signature. And now that employee is ready to essentially finish their time in attendance. Okay, so all of this wraps up and sends the data to the back end where you have that final opportunity to review it, approve it, and then ultimately uh, we kick the information out and over to the ERP system for invoicing, billing, payroll, um, you know, essentially business as usual from that point. Um, really appreciate uh, you showing up to the webinar today. Looking forward to continued interactions um, in the future. And uh, if there are any questions uh, for Q&A, um, be happy to address those now. All right, I don't see any questions yet, Zach, but you're welcome to type those into that little chat area there if you'd like, guys. Um, do you want me to keep it on the iPad, Zach, or does it matter? So I am essentially done presenting uh, for this webinar, so we can shut it down off of the iPad. 
um, unless somebody uh, hops on the Q&A and wants to see anything additional inside of the control center and spend a little extra time. Um, other than that, we can uh, manage individual questions in a post webinar follow up. All right, that sounds like a great plan. Okay, well, in that case, I don't see any any questions coming in. So I am going to uh, close down this lovely webinar. Thank you, Zach, for your time and this excellent presentation. Um, so I will be, like I mentioned earlier, I will be following up with you each with the recording and I will be connecting you with your action account manager and um, to discuss and further the WorkMax discussion at that point. So thank you all and hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks, Zach. Thank you.